I think there will be some people from the LGBT community who feel uncomfortable around football and think it's not for me. What I would say is, um, you know, you couldn't choose a better club than Bournemouth for one thing. I feel supported, I feel safe. I never feel uh, any difficulty in wearing my pride colours when I come to watch the match. So I first went to an AFC Bournemouth match back in 1987. My parents took me along to the promotion celebration match and I ran on the pitch like a giddy little kid staying up late and that was it, I was completely hooked. The first season I came every match was 92-93, uh, I think the first year the Premier League was uh, around and uh, no disrespect to sort of Tony Pulis but that felt a really long way away from what I was watching at Bournemouth but I was completely hooked and also really loved the kits back then, they were, they were quite spectacular. I moved away to university in Exeter in the 90s and sort of followed Bournemouth mainly by CFAX, um, watching, seeing how the results came round. Um, went off to watch the team play at Wembley you know, against Grimsby in 98. Fantastic day out, I hate golden goals. Um, and then afterwards, I uh, moved back home for a little bit and then moved away to Brighton, uh, went to Millennium Stadium, watched the guys get promoted against Lincoln, which was just one of the best days out ever. Um, and then. From then, living in Brighton, would, um, it was pretty easy to get Bournemouth tickets back then. Um, and I would make my mind up on the day. And in fact, I remember one of my first jobs uh, on a CV that I had photocopied. I'd written where my hobbies was following the brackets, sometimes dismal, close brackets, fortunes of AFC Bournemouth. And that apparently stood out and I got an interview. So maybe I got into my career thanks to Bournemouth as well. Who knows? With a great escape season and, and the final game against Grimsby, they've come up again, um, was just incredible. Uh, me and my friend who, who still lives here, uh, we came down to the match and it, the atmosphere was just incredible. All three sides <laughs> were really just, it felt electric and it felt like something really special but obviously um, it wasn't going to plan at first but you kind of knew if anything was going to happen it was going to be Fletch and I just remember him turning to sort of take that shot and just, oh. I know he ran out of gas trying to run up the pitch, but I've never screamed and jumped so much in my life. I still can't watch that goal back without getting like goosebumps. It's just one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And it meant so much. Everyone ran on the pitch. And I remember we sort of got a photo, I think a steward took a photo in the, the dugout. And I turned to my friend and I was like, within 10 years, I'm gonna be in the Premier League. I said, I was obviously a bit giddy, um, but I wonder what, I wonder what odds I'd have got on that. Growing up, I knew I felt different, but it took quite a while to kind of work out what that was because um, there weren't a lot of representation for LGBTQ people in the media, or it was something that was kind of not talked about. You, you couldn't learn about it in schools, it was, it was banned. And it was the sort of thing that people would say is just a phase. Um, but as I got older, I kind of became more sure of myself and uh, I came out a number of years ago now. And uh, the thing is when you're LGBTQ, you, you don't just come out once. You're kind of outing yourself all the time, sometimes when you change jobs or when you change doctors or things like that. And progressively as I've got older and years of, you know, life's improved, I think, dramatically, it's become easier, but it's never easy. And there are still lots of people out there who just don't feel able to come out for various reasons. And that always makes me feel really sad. So I do remember back in the 90s, um, some of the chants could be homophobic and you kind of knew that it was wrong. And it, I used to get this kind of hot feeling that it just felt really bad. But you didn't really know what to do because everybody was kind of joining in back then. It was a really different time. Um, and I think knowing now that that is just not something that's accepted, that that kind of discrimination would be called out. Um, just makes such a difference. I can't imagine what it would be like to, I think of some of the players who've come out since they've retired, people like Thomas Hitzelberger, I can't imagine what it would have been like to have played the whole game, you know, at that level and hiding such a major part of yourself. Um, I just think that would be unbelievable. CFAX uh, no longer is the main source of my news on AFC Bournemouth, so I've been uh, following Bournemouth on social media since the early days really. And uh, I remember scrolling through Twitter and saw this Proud Cherries account um, when I was sort of searching the AFCB hashtag. And I was like, this looks interesting. So I emailed Proud Cherries and said, look, you know, don't be confused by the fact I live in Brighton, I'm a, I'm a Bournemouth fan. 
Um, in fact, I was working for Brighton of Albion for their charity at the time, so it was extra important that I was not being confused as a Brighton fan. Um, and yeah, emailed um, Louise, and I think a few years ago now, um, I was lucky enough to kind of win tickets to come along to a match, one of the Rainbow Laces matches, and uh, we were flag bearers, and that was just incredible. Just to think that, um, you know, this little kid, he used to go along and watch Bournemouth play back in the 90s, was now standing on the pitch, waving out, you know, the, the best team that I'd seen, uh, Bournemouth team I'd seen onto the league, uh, onto the pitch at Premier League, was just incredible. During lockdown, which obviously was uh, a tough time for everybody, um, I got approached by um, Ben at the club and by Louise from Proud Cherries to, to be part of a really exciting project to help design and, uh, and be part of the consultation process for the Pride range uh, that AFC Bournemouth have introduced. I was just knocked out by that. It was first that the club was going to have a Pride range, something that I think is really important so that I can really proudly show who I am when I come to games, but also that they wanted to know my opinion. Um, Luckily, I wasn't actually designing it from scratch because it wouldn't look that great, but I was able to kind of be part of a group and we joined on a, a couple of Zoom calls to see samples and give comments and feedback. And I think when you look at the Pride range in store now, um, obviously there's some incredible models uh, helping show you the Pride range there, but the, the quality of the goods and how it looks, um, you know, it's fantastic and uh, I'm very proud to be associated with it. <laughs> Being able to show that I'm a Bournemouth fan, but also part of the LGBTQ community is so important to me. I think there's something about being able to be who you are. And I know that when you're able to kind of openly show who you are, be proud of who you are and feel safe to be who you are, you're just living more authentically. And that I would want for anybody, regardless of their gender, their sexuality, race, whatever. I want everybody to feel comfortable to represent who they are. And so I think, for me, it makes me feel really proud that I can, you know, I came along at the weekend, bought, bought a hat, bought a new hat, treat myself to the Pride range hat. And, uh, you know, one of the stewards remarked what a cool hat that was, because it's the Pride colours. And I was just like, yeah, it is. And uh, for me, you know, maybe someone sees that, sees me, thinks maybe it's okay for me to come out too. I don't know. I think there will be some people from the LGBT community who feel uncomfortable around football and think it's not for me. Um, and I can understand that because there have been times when it's felt awkward back in the day. What I would say is, um, you know, you couldn't choose a better club than Bournemouth for one thing. Um, I feel supported, I feel safe. I never feel uh, any difficulty in wearing my pride colours when I come to watch the match. And I see them and other fans, and I think that's that's a great time, you know, when you can spot other people that are, uh, you know, either proud to be part of the community or allies wearing the colours as well. I would also say that there are such strides that have been made by the governing bodies in uh, the Football League and the Premier League and the FA in trying to make sure that football is for everybody and that fans, you know, we really are the heart of the game. Players come and go, managers come and go, and seasons come and go, but it's the fans that really do make up the club. And I would say, if you want to be a football fan, I would urge you to, to feel safe and come forward and support your club.